All right, YouTubers, welcome back to the Anonymous Miner channel. And today I'm going to go over the previous installation of this eco-worthy 1000 watt solar grid tie inverter on the roof of my garage and how you could determine which solar panels you could connect to your own solar grid tie inverter. So without further ado, the first thing I want to do is go over how much power I produced. So this system was installed on the 16th of May. I posted the video on the 22nd of May. But since the 16th of May, I have produced about 102.6 kilowatt hours. So I do have another electrical meter that I showed in the other video. That meter is showing 99.4, 99.94 kilowatt hours produced. So I am going to go with 100 kilowatt hours. It's right in between the two. Um, in the initial video, I did show that there was a discrepancy of 3 kilowatt hours. So the difference between these two meters has not changed, really. So I am certain that I have produced about 100 kilowatt hours. And I say certain that I have produced about, and I'm saying very, very close to 100 kilowatt hours. So I'm going to use 100 kilowatt hours for the math today in about 25 days. Um, if you want to do it really simple, um, the average electrical rate is about 10 cents. I've produced 100 kilowatt hours, that's 10 bucks, and that's the end of the video. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, my electrical rate, brace yourself, is not nearly as cheap as 10 cents a kilowatt hour, which is why the solar, where I'm at specifically, and when I'm mining and using so much power, makes a lot of sense. So, my power rate is actually 17 cents a kilowatt hour from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and 45 cents a kilowatt hour from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then from 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., it's also 17 cents a kilowatt hour. Now, I'm actually lucky to have this electrical rate. And you might think that, wait, you're lucky? And yes, I am lucky. So this is what's called a time of use prime rate. The only way I'm actually able to get this rate in Southern California is because I have a household with a residential battery. So to get this time of use rate, you have to have a battery or some sort of huge electrical draw like an electrical heat pump for water or space heating or a plug-in hybrid vehicle. So like a Tesla or any kind of other electric vehicle that you would plug in. That's the only way I'm able to achieve this rate. So I can tell you that if you multiply out 19 hours a day times 17 cents and you multiply this 5 hours out times 45 cents and you average it, it comes out to about 22.8 with a th repeating 3 cents a kilowatt hour. So yes, I am paying almost 23 cents a kilowatt hour on average. So if you do the math on that, we can go 100 kilowatt hours times 22.833333. Oh, I'm sorry, I did the math wrong. So it's 0.228333 times 100 kilowatt hours that we've produced so far. I have saved myself about $22.83. Now, if we use that other number, 102.6, we can go 0.228333 times 102.6. We've actually made about $23.4, so just under a dollar a day is what we're saving with the solar install. Now, the entire cost of the system was just under $1,500. I installed it myself. It took me a couple of hours, the hardest part was finding the studs in the roof to drill into. It really wasn't that hard. I am going to install more solar, and I plan on doing a step-by-step -step video of how I do that. But for now, the other thing I want to talk about and go back to is how I was lucky to have this power plan. And what I mean by that is, here's the regular power plan for where I live. It is 23 cents a kilowatt hour for baseline allocation. What is baseline allocation? Well, baseline allocation is right down here. Where is it? Where is it? 
how to determine there we go okay so you might be in a, a specific region for my power company I can tell you that I'm in region 16 right here it's determined by this map I'll open it up uh, I'm somewhere right in here okay we'll just leave it at that so I'm right in there which means I'm in 16 and that means that I can't use more than a daily of 14.4 kilowatt hours I can tell you that I'm pulling about 6,000 watts continuously so 6,000 watts continuously times 24 hours is 144,000 watts that I pull on a daily average that's about 144 kilowatts so not only am I way beyond this 23 cents a kilowatt hour right here but I am also more than four times this 14.4 at 144 because 400 percent of 14.4 four times 14.4 means that if I exceed 57.6 kilowatt hours in one day I actually have to pay 38 cents a kilowatt hour so if we were to go back and do the math again I should actually be paying I'm using 144 kilowatt hours a day times 0.38 cents so it should be a fifty dollar a day power bill ladies and gentlemen times 30 days approximately we're talking about a one thousand six hundred and forty one dollar power bill and what do I have running um, about 40 graphics cards so would I make back enough money to pay that off yes but only just I would be making like two or three hundred dollars a month after I sold everything and paid my power bill that I don't think would be worth it so when I can get into this what's called time of use plan this makes it extremely worth it and even at this the solar is still very worthwhile in my opinion because if I produced almost a dollar a day and the system was fifteen hundred dollars that means that it should pay itself off in just under four years or so by doing the math and that seems very very worthwhile to me considering the shortest warranty on any of the components that I bought was five years on the inverter this eco worthy inverter right here has a five year warranty through the manufacturer and so based off my calculations the entire system should pay itself off again before anything is even out of warranty so that really makes a lot of sense to me um, you could see what my power bill should have been if we do an average if I'm pulling 6,000 watts right and I'm measuring that with basically a space goats meter at the wall so if I'm pulling a continuous 6,000 watts that came out to that 144 or again right and then if we do that times my electrical rate of 0.28 right so that's my electrical rate per hour mm, it's actually 144 sorry times 0.228333 okay so it's about $32 a day is what I should be paying for a power bill. Okay, and then if we do that times 30 days, my power bill should be about $986. Should be about a $1,000 power bill. Now, what was my power bill actually? Let's see, I'll pull that up right here. Dear Anonymous Miner, your current bill for Southern California Edison customer account number XXXX5136 is now available for viewing and I owe $144 so because of my solar and not just the ones I do have a lot more solar than I'm showing in these videos so far and I will go over all the solar that I have eventually but what my point is is that I'm pulling a continuous 6,000 watts for all my mining rigs and my power bill is only $144 so you can tell the solar is definitely helping me a lot it saved me about eight hundred and fifty dollars this month in total so I think that's very very worth it um, it makes a lot of sense to me I know some other youtubers um, were 
saying that solar is not really worth it and I think it is definitely a case-by-case -case basis and in most situations and over long periods of time it makes a lot of sense. So now how can you figure out which solar panels you can connect to this grid tie inverter yourself? Um, I keep getting a question about these solar panels here. These are Santan solar panels. You can also find them on eBay. Let me go on eBay real quick. And if I search uh, used solar panel on eBay, let me actually type. Okay, so this is the same company. These are the same company. So this is the same exact company. This is just their actual website that I'm on here. So you can use this website or you can go on eBay and buy them. Um, these are good panels. I do not have any personally. I will be buying some soon. I do know that they are good panels though because there's another YouTuber his name is Will Prowse. This is Will Prowse right here. I actually went to high school with this guy. Uh, we graduated the same year from the same high school. But he has a few subscribers here. Just a few. And his entire channel is about do-it-yourself solar with Will Prowse. And these panels in the background here are those exact panels that um, I keep getting questions about. So in the beginning of this video, he shows he's got a palette of them that he purchased and so that is one thing that I do want to mention while we're talking about this is if you are gonna buy these panels they are great panels especially for the price there's a couple of issues though um, one they come on a palette so if you're gonna buy any panels it does not make any sense as will will say in this video and I'll leave a link to this video uh, it's a review about these panels um, he says it right in the video and it's very true it doesn't make any sense to buy one panel you really want to wait until you can buy a stack of panels and fill that pallet because it's like two or three hundred dollars to ship that pallet. So it doesn't make sense to ship one panel. Um, the other thing about these panels is a lot of them have their stickers removed off of the back. So like this one, this one has a sticker right here. If you're planning on doing a grid tie system, most places require the panels be labeled still with the manufacturer label and if the labels have been removed like a lot of these used solar panels do um, you can't install them on a grid tie system so that is something that you need to be aware of and think about when you're purchasing these panels is is it something that you're allowed to install where you're at um, that being said these panels will work on this grid tie inverter there is only one thing um, you need to pay attention to the input voltage on these inverters the input voltage on this specific one is 22 to 65 volts and this is the 1000 watt version so it says direct current DC input of 22 to 65 volts and the output is 110 volts um, the other option is a 2000 watt version and it needs a 45 to 90 volt input on direct current and it can output the 220 to 40 volt circuit so a lot of people are on this one um, the difference between them again is the input voltage so if we go back here and we look at these solar panels this one specifically has an open circuit voltage of 37.6 that means when it's actually not connected to anything it's going to produce 37.6 volts under full sun and when it's actually producing power it's going to be at about 30.3 volts so now at 30.3 volts on the 1000 watt system that's perfect you can stay right there you don't have to worry about it it's between the 22 and 65 volts however on this 2000 watt inverter that's not enough voltage that 30.3 volts even when it's not uh, under a load and it's producing 37 volts it's not high enough it's not above 45 so it's not gonna work so what you would have to do if you wanted to use these solar panels here on this inverter is you would actually have to run two of them together in what's called a series circuit so you're gonna plug 
the negative of one of the solar panels into the positive of the second solar panel. And then the first solar panel, you're going to use the positive and plug it into the inverter. And on the second solar panel, you're going to take that negative wire and plug it into the inverter. And by running them in a series circuit like that, you actually produce 30 volts each. And you can add them together to produce 60.6 .6 volts. So now, with them in what's called a series circuit, you have 60.6 .6 volts, and that's right between the range of these two. So the difference is, if you want to use these two different panels, or these two different inverters, rather, is you'd have to use them in pairs of two panels to use this higher wattage and higher voltage inverter. This, So, whereas I installed three panels all in parallel, meaning all three of the panels that I put on my garage recently, these panels here, all of the positive wires and all of the negative wires just come together in this box that I show here. There's a box right here, it's a combiner box, okay? And it's sealed to my roof, but inside that box, the positive from this panel and the positive from this panel and the positive from this panel all combine together, and the negatives all combine together. They each have their own fuse breaker or circuit breaker inside of this box, but they all combine to one wire. And then later on in this video, right here, this is the wire coming out of the back of that um, box on the roof. So that's a parallel circuit. Um, I didn't have to run anything else because my panels were producing between 22 and 65 volts by themselves. So that worked very well for me. Um, that's how you would determine which panels are compatible or you would have, how you would have to set them up. Um, you need to watch the voltage that your inverter can take in and what your panels can produce. Now the other thing is the wattage. So these panels that I keep getting questions about are about 250 watts each. So what I would recommend doing is putting eight panels in total on this inverter. Now you don't have to do eight panels in total on this 2000 watt inverter. You could do just two panels and produce around 500 watts. That would be a quarter of what this system is capable of. But the issue is you're not actually going to produce about 250 watts. If you watch Will Prouse's video here, you're going to get about 200-ish watts out of each panel. And that's very normal. Um, that's the way that these things work a lot of times. So I would recommend 8 panels. The 8 times 250 comes out to 2,000 watts. But as each of them only is going to produce about 200 watts, you're then at uh, about... What is it? You're going to be at about 1600 watts. So then you're at that 80% rule, which also applies to these uh, inverters and stuff. So um, I would definitely recommend checking out Will Prouse's channel. He's very, very knowledgeable about the solar install and stuff like that. He also has a whole bunch of um, other links and a forum down here that you can participate in. The forums here. Everybody's extremely knowledgeable and helpful. If you have questions about solar or what you need to buy, you can go and ask in there. And um, that's it for me today, guys. Again, I'm making about a dollar a day on that solar system so far. And it seems like it's going to pay itself off pretty quickly. So I appreciate you all. Thank you very much if you made it this far. Uh, if you could give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, like, subscribe, comment, and share. I would greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all my viewers. 